Greetings. Today's reflection is for Sunday, September 5th, the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. In our country, it is also Labor Day weekend. Let us be mindful of the many ways to honor those whose labors, seen and unseen, make ordinary life possible for us. I'm Sister Roberta Papara, a Dominican sister of Cincinnati. Would you believe it? With this segment, Voices of Ascension is marking its one year anniversary. We have David Anderson to thank for bringing this concept to fruition. And I'm grateful because he's the one who sets up, sets up the videotaping for me and also at times in other parts of the church. So I am doubly grateful. I invite us to pause for a moment and turn our hearts to God who loves us unconditionally. Let us pray. Holy God, you are always near us, creating us in new ways. Help us to hear your word of love and compassion and bring this good news to our hurting world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. As a prelude to reading the gospel and my preaching, I want to say just a bit about chapter 7 of Mark's Gospel. It begins with the Pharisees and scribes traveling up from Jerusalem to observe what Jesus and his disciples have been up to. We heard some of this at the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Upon arriving, they notice that the disciples are not following all the laws about washing before eating. Jesus takes them to task and calls them hypocrites, noting they are more interested in human traditions rather than the commandment of God. What is the commandment of God? To love. Jesus then speaks to the crowd around him and later with the disciples, indicating it isn't what goes into a person that's important, but what comes forth from them in word and deed. Then we have a passage that we may not hear this liturgical uh, year. We have Jesus encounter the Gentile woman of Syrophoenician order from the region of Tyre. You may recall this account of her pleading with Jesus to heal her daughter and Jesus rebuking her because she is not a Jew. She takes him in tax, and I love it, as a mother fiercely fighting for her child's need would do in any regard and turns his heart around and perhaps helps Jesus to see his fuller mission on God's behalf and cures the young girl. And now we come to the last part of chapter seven and this week's gospel passage. A reading from the gospel of Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger in the man's ear and spitting touched his tongue. Then Jesus looked up to heaven, groaned, and said to him, Ephatha, Ephatha, be open. And immediately the man's ears were open, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. This is actually being recorded as the Paralympics are happening in Japan. 
Watching the opening ceremonies, the world is reminded that 1.2 billion people on earth have some form of impediment and disability. Yet the athletes gathered for this event, that is not their focus. They are going for the gold. Even so, for the rest of humanity, we still have a way to go to be inclusive of other abled sisters and brothers. Yet imagine in Jesus' time, impediments of any kind, including diseases, ostracizes people. In some cases, as we hear from some accounts in scripture, the person isn't even allowed to be near well people. In today's passage, Jesus is traveling in the area of the Decapolis, the Ten Cities. That is where, most, for the most part, it's outside his usual haunts. It's an area of diverse peoples, as we know from the account with the Syrophoenician woman. We are told that some people, we're not sure who they are, brought a man who was deaf as well as having a speech impediment to Jesus. Who are the people? They may have been Syrophoenicians or from other clans or tribes known to be in the area. Were they family? Were they his best friends? We have no time, we have no idea, because this time Jesus embraces the request and uniquely heals the man. With touch and even his own spittle, as well as in word, Jesus heals the man com completely and immediately. The original text was written in Greek, but Mark is careful to quote Jesus in his own language, and it is important. Ephetha, Ephetha, be open. Go for the gold, open to hearing and speaking and living, open to a community that desires the best for you. That's gold. Yet, True to how Mark portrays Jesus in his gospel, Jesus asked all of them to say nothing, which as we see in the account means everybody start preaching the good news. There is no hiding the goodness of God in Jesus. For some reason, this account reminds me of an English teacher I had in high school, Mr. Leger who insisted I become part of the speech and debate club. Me? Are you kidding? But his patient insistence enabled me to begin, and I mean begin, to be comfortable speaking in front of people. In our own day, we have those who have been able through medical breakthroughs to help people live with so many challenges but that doesn't let the rest of us off the hook. As people of faith, we have the capacity to bring healing into our lives with the gift of a generous heart. Consider how we interact with staff in grocery stores or any retail place. We're not past the pandemic, so offering expressions of gratitude may just be the healing touch in word that someone needs. Remember the AT&T slogan from the 1970s, reach out and touch someone? While we are cautious about social distancing, we can, in word and deed, both are needed together, in word and deed, we can be a healing touch in the world. During this next week, I invite each of us to find those opportunities to express gratitude for the services people provide for us. Don't miss any opportunities. Those people may be right in your own home. For this Labor Day weekend, 
Our closing prayer is adapted from one that comes from Bread for the World. Let us pray. God of justice, we pray for all workers that they may receive fair compensation and treatment for their labor. For those who seek work, provide jobs, both citizen and immigrant alike. For those who cannot work, provide sustenance. Lord, inspire those who lead industry and commerce of this country to be responsive to your perfect will of love. Build up in the leaders of our country a respect for all labors. We ask all these things for our good and your glory. Amen.